Well, today's boat project day, and uh, it's gonna be kind of a poopy day, so we're gonna take care of a little bit of plumbing stuff. Uh, we're gonna do a little work on the macerator, replace the impeller on the macerator, and we're gonna service the toilet. Yeah, the job scope. So, of all the things that you gotta do, I guess if there's no getting around it, every now and then we gotta do the bad stuff too. So, let's get to it. start with the macerator changing the impeller and um, I guess the first thing to do is to pull up all the floorboards well pull up some of the floorboards I also want to have a look at the uh, the impeller and the motor while we're here so yeah I'll show you show you how this goes so well, we'll see <laughs> we'll see how this goes First thing we got to do is we got to take out the four eight millimeter bolts that are that are in there because that's where the impeller sits. Trying to see that the impeller is still intact and is in good shape. And it is keyed, so there is a keyway in there. The actual impeller that was in there that chops everything up the macerator portion of this had some kind of fibrous material wrapped around it and that i believe was stopping the motor from spinning and when we dug deeper and looked at the impeller itself the impeller was fine um, don't see any problem with the impeller so reassembled with the impeller still in place and cleaned up the macerator portion that chops everything up and now it's reassembled and we're going to put it back in the boat and test it and see that it works and with a little bit of luck fingers crossed we'll be good to go 
If I put the tape on this way, the end of the tape is not going to ball up on itself because it's going in the same direction we're going to thread the pipe on. Now we're going to take our macerator and we're going to put it back where it came from. Tested the motor, the motor actually did run, but it's um, not running well enough to actually turn the macerator when it's all put together again. So tomorrow it's going to be a trip back down to uh, the marina and get it replaced and I'll reinstall it tomorrow I guess. Today's Sunday, they're not open. Um, but while I got things all open, uh, the engine compartment open, I'm going to have a look at the um, gonna have a look at the oil make sure that our engine oil is good um, it doesn't need to be changed yet we, we did it not that long ago and haven't run the engine too much since went down to the marina and picked up the new macerator and I've now installed the macerator uh, I, I spare you the details of putting it back in because it, it looks exactly the same as doing the, the one that didn't work. Um, so new macerator's in and imagine that, it works. So that's great news. And uh, now when we go offshore or we're, you know, off, well, away from here, um, we can use our holding tank and, and that system to take care of all the poopy stuff because well, that's just poopy. You don't want that in the water. Um, so yeah, we can uh, we can now master it, which is which is great. And um, yeah, so I guess uh, on to the next thing, on to the the Japsco. Basic tools that we're going to need to do this little job. Um, really straightforward. Uh, you need a flathead screwdriver that's gonna it's gonna fit the screws. Up. So there's six screws on here um, to look at, and so you need to make sure that you have the appropriate screwdriver for that. And you're also gonna need a lubricant. Okay, so here we go. Um, first first step in in dealing with this is to evacuate the water that's in the system. And so on the side here, the lever has uh, two positions. One basically brings water in. If you flip it to the left, that brings water in and refills the bowl. If you flip it to the right, that evacuates the water from the bowl. So we're gonna take all the water out of that bowl and that's our, our first step. And I can feel already, this definitely needs to be serviced. It's kind of stiff and sticking. And definitely doesn't feel like it, it's moving very smooth. So this is, this is gonna make a big difference when we finish this little project. Okay, water's evacuated from the bowl. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this into the fill position. This is a horrible job to begin with. So first thing I like to do is I like to get something down there <clears throat> to catch any excess water that may, may fall out of here. I also think it's a, it's a really good idea because of what we're dealing with. Um, don't forget to use your personal protection. Valve goes over to the fill position. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off the rear, the rear tube. That's gonna, that's where the water is gonna wanna come, come back in and refill the bowl. And then I'm gonna take my screwdriver and start undoing the six screws that are, that are holding the top of this on. Now I'm pulling 
filling this up really slowly because I don't want to pull up, I don't want to make a huge mess here if I don't have to. And I don't have to, so I'm not gonna. There it is. That is, that's it. And actually we did pretty good. We didn't have much of a mess out of that at all. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the big o-ring on the bottom of this. Um, it's a dynamic o-ring which means that it slides up and down in the cylinder uh, and that's what actually is moving all the water back and forth. And the easiest way to do that is to pinch the o-ring on the sides and slide it up and you'll see that it kind of starts to protrude at this end. And that, that's what we want. So we want to take that and flip it over the, over the side of that and it comes out really easy. The nice thing about that is if you're not using a pick or any kind of a tool that could nick or damage that o-ring. So the o-ring is going to last a lot longer and stay in, stay in better shape. So just give that a little, get that a little bit clean. Nice hot water in there. And I um, also find that uh, Costco, these uh, yellow microfiber claws, um, they sell them at Costco. It's um, I think currently they're they're about 20 bucks for a bag of them and you get, I don't know how many in a bag, it's a, it's a huge amount. Uh, it actually works out, I think, less expensive to use that um, for a lot of these little jobs because you can wash them and reuse them, which is really nice. And I like to think that that's a bit more environmentally friendly than just throwing out paper towel. Anyway, so back to the task at hand. Um, this is all fairly grub, grubby and grimy. So I'm going to give that a, a bit of a clean up and get the old, the old lubricant off there. Um, you want to pay particular attention to inside this little groove right here. Um, this is where the O-ring sits and that, that little groove is, um, you get, you get excess, excess lubricant in there and that's a good thing um, because that's what, that's what that O-ring sits in and you want to have extra lubricant in there so that it has a bit of a reservoir to draw from as it, as it starts to, uh, you know, use up that the lubricant as it, as it goes up and down in the cylinder. So I'm going to clean that up real well and uh, make sure that it's, it's all sparkly clean. Um, get any debris and munge off that. And I'm going to clean up the shaft as well just to make sure. This shaft should actually uh, polish itself over time and, and um, I can see where there's, it's, it's actually doing that on, on this one. There's, a, there's an area down here that you can see the, there's a bit, a bit of a difference from the, the original finish. And what that's from is inside here is another O-ring and as that slides up and down, of course, that other O-ring, it's also a dynamic O-ring. Uh, that other O-ring that's, there you go. Now you can see it. Uh, that other O-ring that's in there is uh, causing causing wear, um, a small amount of wear on that shaft, and um, that's that's polishing the shaft over time. So, in time, theoretically, this should actually become easier and smoother. Um, so basically, I'm just going to give this a, a bit of a cleanup. thing I'm going to do is re-lubricate this o-ring and for that I'm going to use our handy super lube and not only am I going to just re-lubricate that o-ring um, this stuff's fairly thick it um, has a it's a fairly thick viscosity so I want to make sure that I get lubricant on that o-ring and I'm going to work the lubricant all the way around and I'm going to, you know, having plenty of it on there isn't a bad thing. Um, and I'm going to set that down for a sec. On the plunger itself, that little groove that goes around here that the o-ring sits in, I'm going to make sure that I actually get lots of, lots of lubricant in that as well. Uh, and the reason for that is that will work as a reservoir for that o-ring. So you won't have to service this quite as often. And I'm just going to work the work the silicone lubricant in there. So that O-ring has a good amount of lubricant to draw from as time goes on. 
Now I don't want it to be all over the place. What I'm looking to do is I'm, I'm really looking to keep that lubricant inside that groove because when I go to put the O-ring back on over top of that, you'll notice it's gonna kind of squish out a little bit and that's okay because that means that there's there's lots in there and that's gonna make that, that slide up and down the cylinder really easy. And that's good. So that's about all there is to um, that portion of, of uh, doing the maintenance job here. A little black gasket here. This little black gasket has these two bronze uh, pads on them. And underneath those is what seals for the flushing and uh, letting the water in. So I'm gonna give this a quick clean. And once I've got that all cleaned up, um, then we can go back to the, uh, the business end of the system and reinstall. All right, so there is, um, there's a couple things I'm going to show you here. So this is the cylinder that that main uh, O-ring, the big O-ring that we just serviced. That's what it slides up and down in. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of debris in there and, and it generally it's, it's kind of gross and uh, as expected. So I'm gonna take my microfiber cloth and I'm gonna clean that out really well and then we're gonna lubricate that as well. Um, this is one of the one of the seats that that flat seal sits on. Uh, so this is water in from the uh, from uh, outside and this is the seat that the other one sits on that uh, seals. So there's two chambers here essentially, input and outgoing, and um, I'm going to make sure that uh, this is cleaned up as well. So I'll give that a quick scrub, clean this all up a little bit, and uh, then we can start putting stuff back together. Okay. That's not looking too bad. So I'm going to reinstall this, and that's just a matter of setting it in the, in the groove. Um, check that little seat right there for nicks or damage and I don't feel anything at all so that's good. Next thing to do is to uh, reinstall this um, bronze bronze little wear pads they sit in an upright position so they just go down there make sure that that's down nice and snug and that is your seal around the uh, around the whole unit. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure again that I, I get a, a fair bit of lubricant and I'm gonna lube this in here real well. So uh, as that O-ring again is sliding up and down in here, it's gonna, it's gonna have lots of lubricant on it. And after, you know, the, the reality is it doesn't last all that long, but it does, it does make a difference, I think. And uh, in the long run, if I can make this last a little longer, that's great. Okay, so here we go. All we gotta do is reinstall this. Just gonna slide that down nice and slow. I'm trying to hold things in place. Reinstall the screws. So again, when you're reinstalling these screws, it's, it's uh, critical to remember that they are just going into plastic. It's plastic housing. The whole the whole system basically is is made out of plastic, except for those two little I don't know if they're bronze or what they are, but uh, little pads that that are in there for the seals. So that's that. the gloves off and we can tighten these up again. Last thing to do is to reinstall the, the hose and uh, service is done. You're probably wondering why all the work on the boat suddenly. Well, it's pretty simple. We're getting ready to go sailing and to get ready to go sailing, we gotta take care of some of the little jobs that have been needing to be done. Um, 
hopefully in some way, uh, anybody who has uh, a Javsco macerator and or Javsco toilet, uh, hopefully, hopefully this has helped in some way. Uh, there's lots of these around, on, on, especially on the older boats, and uh, there's tons of older boats around. So if you have one of these, I hope this video has made, uh, made it easier for you to work on it. And uh, we're looking forward to going out sailing. So until next time, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, please hit the subscribe button if you like these videos, and uh, like or dislike as you see fit. We'll uh, talk to you soon.